how's it going guys got uh, a little project here it's a repair on a little mini fridge and uh, this thing's probably about two foot tall about 18 inches wide and uh, it's a black and decker and here's a model number and stuff what's interesting about this uh, refrigerator and why I'm making a video on it is how it works um, it's not powered by a compressor it doesn't use refrigerant um, it's supposed to have two of these these cooling units in it um, I kind of got a, a jump start on it so it's not what it, you know how it was but here's the fan for the other unit but um, pretty much you know, I got the thing for free, and it said that, you know, everybody said it just doesn't get cold enough. And, um, yes, yeah, so they gave it to me. Well, as soon as I fired it up, plugged it in, I put my, feet, my hand in front of the one of the units inside, and it wasn't blowing any cold air, and the other one was. And I took the back off of it, and I'm like, what the heck is this? But, um, I know that of coolers, like Coleman makes a cooler, and, um, my uncle has one or two of them. He's a truck driver. Plugs into his, you know, you know 12 volt receptacle in his truck. And um, I, so I knew, I knew of a, that there's some electronical way of cooling this cooler he has, you know, without a compressor. But I just never really seen it and how you know what, what the components were I just figured it's some kind of MOSFET kind of thing where one side gets hot one side gets cool that was my guess um, what we have going on here is you know you got your 120 cord coming in this is a 12 volt uh, device everything come all these wires coming out of it is 12 volt there is a thermostat switch in the inside um, so you got two heat sinks for each unit, a heat sink on the outside, a heat sink on the inside, both sides has a fan. You know, and it just takes the uh, hot air from the inside, transfers it to the outside. There's, you know, warm air coming out of this right now. Um, my guess is the reason why it died is that I did blow this out already. And on the other side of that fan, it was a complete wall of dust. You couldn't even see through and see the fins of the heat, the heat sink through it. So my guess is it probably overheated and burned out the unit. Um, how it works. Uh, there was a red wire that came off of this. And you have this little plate that's called a peltier. Um, one side gets hot as a stove. The other side gets as low as minus 40 degrees. Um, from what I gather, it doesn't matter if that's Celsius or Fahrenheit because minus 40 degrees on either is the same. But, as far as I know. <laughs> but anyways, I opened it up just to see what's inside of it. And, um, from what I gather, there's, they are some kind of, uh, semiconductor, um, in channel and I think was it in channel and P channel or something like that anyway it just transfers heat from one side to the other um, it is kind of destroyed the whole thing kind of would have looked like this area here um, the wire just fell out of the other side of it my guess is is it you, you see it, it's all soldered joints in here and once this would reach a certain temperature, it probably desolder start desoldering stuff inside. It may not even actually. Yeah, I suppose it could burn out. You know, something the components could burn out, but the solder would probably start letting loose in it once it got to a certain temperature. But here's the part number. Um, this is a 60 watt unit. And you can get these in various wattages. Um, basically, the components inside are all the same. It's just the more wattage, the bigger the unit gets. Um, these things are only like two or three dollars. Cheaper if you get them directly from the guy in China. 
Um, doesn't matter if you buy a US one or a Chinese one on eBay, it's probably all Chinese. But um, it is currently 77 degrees out here, so this is not a room temperature test. Um, probably the proper way to test something like this would be in room temperature because it's a, an indoor unit. So um, even if I had both units working, this really wouldn't be a valid test because of the room temperature condition. Um, the Coleman coolers, they advertise as saying that they are, they'll drop the temperature 40 degrees based on whatever temperature it is outside. So if it was 80 degrees outside, your cooler should get down to around 40. Um, anyway, what we're going to do is stick this thermostat in the side with the unit only halfway is working and see what it comes down to. It's already it's turned up to the maximum setting. But um, it doesn't really feel very cool in here. I already did a I already stuck this thing directly in front of the fan once. Uh, it, it brought down the temperature about 11 degrees with this thing sitting directly in front of the fan with the door open. So this test here, we're going to see, you know, what we got um, with the door closed for about an hour and see what it, how cool it gets inside. Um, the test is kind of messed up a little bit because uh, this unit not working, even if it was all installed, would be transferring heat um, just because there is a heat sink on each side and there is a fan on it would be a fan on each side, so it would be losing losing what this thing's capable of doing because of the heat transfer through here. So I insulated it with a piece of bubble wrap, and there is an insulating plate in there uh, to try to block it off a little bit. But we'll see what happens. Um, I have new of these ordered; they're just not here yet. I will put them in this video, and probably the finish the repair in this video. But uh, see what happens. All right, so it's been about an hour, and uh, see if we can open this door quickly and see what we got. There's, uh, there's nothing else in the fridge, so the temperature's gonna drop quick or rise quickly. We got 54. Four, sixty-four, seventy. It's about a uh, twenty-two. 22 degree difference from outside to inside so yeah with two units in there I'm sure it's gonna work not just twice as better but probably almost three times because I have losses up here right now I guess I mean I can see daylight through there so um, this thing should be capable of almost freezing stuff probably with two of them units in it but, uh, well uh, as soon as I get those uh, things which will be in like a millisecond for you guys we'll uh, start repairing this thing all right it's been about a week and uh i've got the new piltier devices i got five of them i only got one laying out here and they came like individually wrapped like this in one bag but individually wrapped not that it matters much um i'm not gonna sell this machine i'm just gonna probably take it to work so i just Use the wire nuts and stuff on. I could get all pretty and solder them directly to the board, but I'd, it'll work just fine this way. But uh, pretty much, this just gets sandwiched between these two heat sinks. There's an insulating barrier, and uh, I'll put that all together and see what we got. But uh, I'd like to note that with one piltier missing, this fridge drawed 70 watts, so. We'll see what we got when we put it all together. And, uh, put this together and see what we got. Alright, got it all hooked up, plugged in. I don't have any fans on this guy yet right now, so I can temporarily run it until it starts warming up the heat sink. But, uh, see how many watts we're using. 114 so it was at 70 now we're at 
113. Alright. It's definitely getting warm on this side and cooler on this side. Nice if I had one of them like little uh, laser laser uh, deep temperature things, temperature probe. But uh, well, we'll get it all installed in there, and then uh, we'll do our test again with the uh, thermometer and see what we get inside. So I kind of came across a little bit of a problem and uh, as I was putting it together I should have showed you guys on video but the Piltier that I took out of this unit fit perfectly inside of the the hole that's cut in that insulation in the, you know, between the two, the two blocks and uh, the one I stuck in there was probably about a quarter inch smaller all the way around so the wattage rating on those basically um, they just get bigger and bigger and bigger as the higher the wattage is the bigger they are so the one that I ordered is not the one that fits in there so the results also show on the temperature uh, with the door open I set the thermostat directly in front of the little one and mind you this is the current outside temperature I got about 59 degrees on the one that I replaced and uh, let's see the I got about 51 on the original one below it so what I put in there is not powerful enough but um, you know we'll put the thermostat in the fridge closed and leave it there for about an hour and uh, let's use the shaking with the camera and see if it gets cold enough in there I mean I'm pretty much I'm just looking about put have cold drinks in here and heck it was you know before it was able to go down to what was it 50 50 late 50 degrees Fahrenheit and a 70 some degree outside temperature so uh, this test is going to be a little different than last because it is colder out here you know we're more on the lines of uh, room temperature but uh, we'll see what we got the fridge is currently set to maximum temperature but uh, it'll probably work fine but we'll see what we get and uh, we'll wrap this video up on well, uh, how do we see what we get in there and uh, we're currently st seems like after it runs for a little bit it kind of winds down a little we're at 112 watts but uh, we'll see what we get all right, it's been about an hour or so for this refrigerator running with the door closed, and I do notice that it kind of drops in wattage as it cools off, we're down to 110. So we'll whip this door open and see what kind of temperature we got on this uh, thermometer. I haven't noticed it shut off or anything like that, like it was done with a cycle. So here we go. Well, we got 40, which is the higher end, you know, normal, you know, generic term is normal refrigerator temperature. That would be a 41 is 5 degrees Celsius, so that would be pretty, pretty normal temperature. Um, it has warmed up out here a bit, so I'll let this thing, uh, this thing climb back up and then we'll uh, conclude the video. All right, so I went ahead and put the back on there, and, uh, which is very important. Always put your back on the refrigerator, even if it's made out of cardboard, because it's usually uh, a way of moving air around in areas that they want it. Like this one here, it actually diverts it to this little tray to dry up the condensation. Some others' backs actually are as part of moving air through. Um, a condenser or anything like that. Um, bounced around to 69 to 70, so it is room temperature out here. So this thing was capable, within an hour at least, of going down to a normal refrigerator temperature of 40 or 5 degrees Celsius. Um, unless it was verified to go a little lower than that, I wouldn't put cheese or meat or stuff in there or milk for too long because it might go bad. Uh, 
sooner than it should. But um, it's also a lot better for any refrigerator to have something in it. Um, having nothing in it at all it has nothing to uh, buffer off of. You know, so it's generally easier for them with something in, inside. Anyway, it's uh, all fixed and uh, ready to go. I'll uh, catch you guys later.